All right, in this lesson, we're going to uh, look at the topic of writing an equation in slope-intercept form given the slope and a point. All right, so given equation, so you're going to write an equation in slope-intercept form given the slope and a point. Now, when we work these problems, you're going to notice that we're going to do it uh, two, two ways. And it's very important that you understand both ways. All right, so, so don't just focus on learning one way versus the other. You need to know both. Both are important. So as you go through this, you're going to notice that, that as, we, as we work these problems, uh, we can use two ideas. So we can use uh, the slope-intercept form, slope-intercept form, and, and we can use point-slope form something called point-slope form. Now, you all know, based on what we've done in the past, you all know, you all know what slope-intercept form looks like. Slope-intercept form is this, y equals mx plus b. Now, here's point-slope form, and, you'll, and we're going to see what it looks like in a little while. But here's point-slope form. So point-slope form is this, y minus y1 equals a slope times x minus x1. All right, now, the words correspond to these equations. So notice point slope form, I'm sorry, intercept form. So notice intercept, so slope intercept form. You're, uh, uh, when, whenever you're looking at slope intercept form, you must know the slope and the y-intercept. All right, so slope corresponds to this, y-intercept corresponds to this constant b, okay? Point slope form, look at what that looks like. So the slope corresponds to m and that point corresponds to that x1, y1. So the point that we're referring to, so the point will correspond to x1, y1. Okay? All right. So slope-intercept form, slope-intercept, point-slope form, point, uh, I'm sorry, point and then slope. Okay? Point-slope. All right? Okay. Now, let me just show you where that point-slope form comes from. So, so if we have, if we have a, a line, let's say, Looks like this. And let's say this point here, I'm going to call this point x1, y1. And I'll call this point, let's just call it xy. All right? So, so you, you, you can, um, so remember two points, two distinct points will define a line. And so I can find, I can find the uh, equation of this line by using the idea of slope. All right, so remember slope. Slope is, is where, um, is, remember, is a change in y. Let me write it this way. Change in y divided by the change in x. So remember, change in y means you subtract the y-coordinates from each other, and change in x means you subtract the x-coordinates from each other. Okay? And so, so um, let's go ahead and, and do the numerator. So the numerator, so change in y, I'm going to subtract the, the y-coordinates from each other. I'm going to start with, with, uh, with y. So I'm going to say y minus y1. But remember, in the past, when we talked about using a slope formula in the past, we know that the order in the denominator matters depending on what you have in the numerator. So since I started, see this y came from this point right here, right? So the denominator, I've got to start with this point. So we're going to say y minus y1 divided by x minus x1. All right, and that's the slope. Okay, now, remember... Let me remind you about something. So, so you, I'm going to write you know, uh, the, the uh, variable m as m divided by 1. Remember, m here stands for slope. Okay, so remember, this is a proportion, right? So, so I'm going to go ahead and cross-multiply, just like this. So that's a proportion. We'll go ahead and cross-multiply. Or if you want to, you can multiply both sides by the least common denominator, which is x minus x1. But it's a proportion, so let's just go ahead and cross-multiply. So remember, a proportion using the word proportion, a proportion, a proportion is where you have a ratio equal to a ratio, a fraction equal to a fraction. All right, so when I cross multiply, 1 times y minus y1 is y minus y1 equals m times this expression, right? So it'll be m times x minus x1. And there is your point slope right here. So this is point slope form, point slope form. Right, so that's where it comes from.
It comes from the slope formula. Point slope form comes from the slope formula. Okay, now let's look at an example. So in number in number one, let's go ahead and look at number one. All right, all right, so here's the first one. So write, so the directions will say something like this. Write an equation in slope-intercept form for the following lines. So you have this line that, that contains this point right here, 4, negative 3, and it has this slope. So if, if you were to look at the graph of it, let's just see what the graph looks like. And, and you've had that experience before. So so remember, you're, you're, you're told that, uh, remember, to, um, when you draw a line, you need two points on that line. So here's one of them, 4, negative 3. So let's go ahead and plot that point. So 4, negative 3. So I'm going to go to the right 4. Start the origin to the right 4 and then down 3. So there's the point right here, 4, negative 3. All right, so I know one point. I know one point on that line. Okay, now remember the slope is negative, right? So since the slope is negative, your line is going to fall. So it'll look something like this. It'll go through this point right here. It'll look something like this. But you're told that the slope is negative 7 halves. So remember, that's rise over run. So I'm going to use the slope to find the other point. All right, so, so my rise is negative, right? So since the rise is negative, remember rise, you go up, down, run, you go left, right. My rise is negative, so that means that from this point, I'm going to go down 7. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And then my run is a positive 2, so I'm going to go to the right 2. So let's do that again. From here, you go down 7 units. 1, 2, uh, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 and then to the right two, one, two, and then you put the other point right here. And this point, if you label it, that's going to be, let's see, you're going to go uh, to the right six, and then down ten, right? So it'll be six comma negative ten. And then if you draw your line, oops, if you draw your line, this is the line. And notice it is, it is falling. Um, so it looks something like this. Okay? And so there's the line. And what you're trying to find is what's the equation of this line? So remember, you have all these points. There's an infinite number of points here. You use these two to help you graph that line. And you're just trying to find what's the equation of that line. So that's what you're about to do, finding the equation of that line. Okay, so remember um, with what we talked about earlier, so there are two ways you can do it. You can use slope-intercept form, and you can use point-slope form. We're going to do both, and it's important that you know both. Okay? So let's do the first approach. So the first approach will be using slope-intercept form. So I'm going to write it like this. First approach. It's important you know both. First approach. And whenever you, you're taking a test or doing a worksheet, it does not matter which approach you use unless it's stated in the directions. So always follow directions. All right. Um, all right. First approach. So first approach is to use slope-intercept form. Use slope-intercept form. Okay? I remember, slope intercept form is y equals mx plus b. All right, now remember we talked about before. So if, if you're going to use slope intercept form, you must know the slope and you must know the y intercept. Okay? In our problem, I know the slope, but I don't know the y intercept. So remember, that's not the y intercept, right? So remember, the y intercept is where the graph crosses the y axis. So, so the y intercept, if if you're if if you're given a point and it's a y-intercept, then then your x-coordinate has to be zero. And notice that x-coordinate is not zero here. Okay, so that is not the y-intercept. All right. So you may say, well, how how am I going to find that y-intercept if if this is not the y-intercept? All right. Well, it's very easy. So so if you're going to use that first approach, which is which is a slope-intercept form. So you're, you're trying to find the y-intercept, right? You know the slope. You don't know the y-intercept. So then you got to fill in an x and a y. So x, y here means, means um, uh, you must know a point on that line, and I do. So a point on that line, point on line, is 4, negative 3. So this is going to be your x, and this is going to be your y that you're going to substitute in here. All right, and so here's what you do. So y, which is negative 3 equals the slope, which is negative 7 halves, times x, which is a positive 4, plus b. And then all I'm going to do is simplify this and then solve for b. And so I get negative 3 equals, now if you look at this, negative 7 halves times 4, you can reduce before you multiply, 
or you can multiply it first. A negative 7 times 4 is a negative 28. A negative 28 divided by 2 is a negative 14. Or you could just say 2 and a 2 is 1, 2 and a 4 is 2, and negative 7 times 2 is a negative 14, and then plus b. And then to get b by itself, you're going to add 14 to both sides, and then combining like terms, a negative 3 plus 14 is 11, equal, this is 0 right here, those are opposites, a negative 14 and positive 14 is 0, equal b, and you found your y-intercept. All right, so now your answer, your answer in slope-intercept form, remember you want to write this in slope-intercept form, y equals mx plus b, so your answer will be y equals m, which is a slope, which you know is negative 7 halves times x plus b, which is 11, and that's it. There's your answer, okay? So, so this right here, um, the equation of this line right here is, the equation of this line is y equals negative 7 halves x plus 11, all right? Um, so, so that means if you, so remember, if you were to extend this right here, the, the graph would cross the uh, y-axis at 11. That's what that means, okay? You found the y-intercept to be 11. Okay, all right. Now, that's the first approach, all right? So let's look at that second approach. Remember, you, got, you have to know both ways. All right, second approach. So second approach, second approach is to use point slope form right here. Y minus Y1 equals a slope times X minus X1. All right, second approach is to use point slope form. Second approach, use point slope form. All right, so Y minus Y1 equals a slope times X minus X1. All right, so um, so in, in order to use in order to use point slope form, in order to use point slope form, you must know the slope, which you do. The slope, remember, is negative seven halves. And you must know an x1 and a y1, which you do. You know the point. The point is, remember, four negative three. So that's gonna be your x1, that's gonna be your y1. So whenever you whenever whenever you use point slope form, you're gonna the point you're gonna substitute into the into point slope form, you're gonna put the values for x1 and y1. Okay? When you did when you did slope intercept form, you put the values here for x and y. Alright, so notice the difference here versus here. Okay? Alright, and then let's go ahead and substitute. So I get y minus y1, which is negative 3. Now be careful, you must you must see that this is a subtraction right here. So you're going to say y minus y1. y1's a negative 3. So you see that? y minus y1 equals the slope, which is negative 7 halves, times x minus x1, which is 4, positive 4. Now, you need to simplify this part right here. You need to know that y subtract the negative 3 means the same thing as y plus the opposite of a negative 3. So that's y plus 3 equal. Now, for this one, let's go ahead and distribute. So you can just distribute a property to get rid of the parentheses. A negative 7 halves times x is a negative 7 halves x. And then notice a negative times a negative is a positive, right? A negative times a negative is a positive. Now off to the side, let's figure out what 7 halves times 4 is. So 7 halves times 4. I already took care of the signs. Now let's just look at 7 halves times 4. So 7 halves times 4, you can think of it as 28 divided by 2, because that's 1 right here. So 28 divided by 2, which is 14. Or you can reduce if you want to, 7 halves times 4. You could say 2 into 2 is 1, 2 into 4 is 2, 7 times 2 is 14. And so you get plus 14. Okay? And then to get y by itself, and remember the reason you want to get y by itself is, is because you want to put the answer in slope-intercept form. So slope-intercept form means you got to get y by itself. So I'm gonna right now I'm adding three, so the opposite is to subtract three. And notice when I combine like terms, these are opposites. Positive three and negative three turns out when added is zero. So I get y plus zero is y equal negative seven halves x. And then positive fourteen and a negative three is a positive eleven. And there's your answer. 
the same answer here that you got um, here. See that? All right. So it's important to know both approaches. Both approaches are important to know. Okay. So that's number one. Let's look at another one. So it's not that difficult, right? Not difficult at all. All right. Let's look at let's look at number two. So here's number two. All right, so here's number two. So you want to write the equation of a line. So remember the directions is the same as number one. Write the equation right here. Write the equation of a line. Let me go ahead and cover this part up. Write the equation of a line in slope-intercept form uh, for the following line. So you want the answer in slope-intercept form. So you want to get y by itself. All right, and in this case, you're given that the line goes to this point negative 2, 6, and has slope 4. So if you were to graph this line, which you don't have to, but if you were to graph it, so you know that the, the point of that line is negative 2, 6. So here's negative 2, 6. So from the origin, I go to the left 2 and up 6. So that's about here. So there's the point, negative 2, 6. And I know that the slope is positive, so my line's going to rise, right? So it's going to rise like that. And my slope here is 4, which I can rise 4 over 1, which is rise over run. So my rise is 4, so I'm going to go up 4, and my run is 1, I'm going to go to the right 1. So up 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, and then to the right 1. All right? And so there's that other point, and if I wanted to label that other point, remember how to label this. To get to that point, you're going to go from the origin, go to the left 1, and then up 10. So that is one, negative 1, comma, 10. And then if you graph it, if you graph this, um, you're trying to find the equation of this line right here. And that, that's what you're about to do, find the equation of that line. All right, now let's go ahead and do both approaches. So first approach, remember first approach, we're going to go ahead and use slope-intercept form. First approach, slope-intercept form. All right, remember slope-intercept form is y equals mx plus b. Now remember, um, uh, if you're going to use slope-intercept form, you must know the slope and you must know the y-intercept. The problem is you don't know the y-intercept. You know a point in that line, obviously you can see that that point is not on the y-axis, right? So you don't know that y-intercept. The y-intercept is somewhere up here. So the y-intercept is around here, right? You don't know where that is, you're trying to find it. Okay, so if, if you're gonna find, if you're gonna find the y-intercept, so to find the y-intercept, you gotta have to substitute all this other information. So you know the slope, the slope is 4, and you know the point of that line. The point in that line is negative 2, 6. So I'm going to substitute into this formula right here. I'm going to substitute negative 2 for x, and then 6 for y. All right, so let's go ahead and do that. So y, which is 6, equals the slope, m, which is 4, times x, which you're told is negative 2. So those 4 times negative 2, I put negative 2 in parentheses because it's negative, plus b, which is what you're trying to find. So now I can solve this equation for b. So I have, let's go ahead and simplify this, though. So I have 6 equal 4 times negative 2 is a negative 8, plus b. Adding 8 to both sides to get b by itself. 8 plus 6 is 14. Equal, this is 0, and you left with b. So there's your y-intercept. So this, this y-intercept right here, this y-intercept right here is going to be at 14. That's where it's going to be. All right, so that's why the graph's going to cross the y-axis. Now, I'm trying to find the equation of that line, and so we're almost done. So y equals, so the answer is going to be this, your answer. You're going to say y equals, um, the, the so remember, y equals mx plus b. So the slope is 4, the so 4x, plus the y-intercept, which you just found to be 14, and there's your answer. So y equals 4x plus 14. So that's the equation of this line. So y equals... Um, 4x plus 14. Okay, all right. So that's what you're, that. In terms of a visual, that's that's what you're you're looking at. You're trying to find the equation of this line, and then we put it in slope-intercept form. So remember, you got to get y by itself. So there's the slope. Slope is 4, and there's the y-intercept, which you can see now that it passes at 14. All right, that was number two using the first approach. Now let's do number two using the second approach. All right, so you got to know both. It's very important that you know. Both. So let's do the second approach. And the second approach is where you're going to use point slope form. So second approach, point slope form. All right, second approach. All right, so point slope form. 
Now remember, point slope form is y minus y1 equals the slope times x minus x1. And if you're going to use point slope form, you must know the slope and you must know a point, right? You must know the slope and a point. Slope and a point. And to know a point, a point negative 2, 6, right? Negative 2, 6. So that means that, that in place of, in place of, of um, um, x1, I'm going to substitute negative 2. And in place of, of um, y1, I'm going to substitute 6. So there's your x coordinate, there's your y coordinate. All right, so let's go ahead and substitute. So y minus y1, which is 6, you see that? equals the slope, which I found to, which, which we're told is 4, times x minus, remember we're subtracting, so x minus x1, but x1 is negative, so always be careful when, when, when one of these coordinates is negative. And now let's go ahead and simplify this part right here, because you know that, that x subtract negative 2 means x plus the opposite, right? So the opposite of negative 2 is a positive 2. So let's go ahead and rewrite this. I have y minus 6 equals 4 times x plus 2. So that's what you have to do first. You have to simplify this part here. All right, now let's go ahead and get rid of the parentheses. So we're going to go ahead and distribute. So I get y minus 6 equals 4 times x is 4x. 4 times 2 is 8. And then to get y by itself, remember you're trying to get y by itself, right? Because you're, you're told you want, you want your, uh, the answer to be in slope-intercept form. So you got to get y by itself. So I'm going to add 6 to both sides. And when I combine like terms, these are opposites. Negative 6 and the positive 6 are opposites. So I get y equal 4x plus 14. And notice that's the same answer here that we got here. See that? Same answers. All right. So first approach that we did was using slope-intercept form. You saw the process. Second approach is to use point-slope form. You have to know both. You have to know both in order to be able to use these for um, other topics that are coming up. You have to understand both approaches. All right, so that was number two. Let's look at number three. All right, here's number three. So you want to find the equation of a line in slope intercept form that has these conditions. So it passes through this point and it has this slope. So let's look at both approaches. Remember, first approach, first approach is to use slope-intercept form. Slope-intercept form. All right, and so that's y equals mx plus b. And just like before, in order to use slope-intercept form, you must know the slope and the y-intercept. I know the slope. I don't know the y-intercept. This is not the y-intercept, right? Okay. If you, if you think about it, that's not the y-intercept. Let's, let's remember where that's at. So negative 9, 5, negative 9, 5 is in the second quadrant. So obviously you can see that that's not where the graph crosses the y-axis, right? Okay. All right, so that's, that's negative 9, 5 right here. All right, so that's not the y-intercept. So you're trying to find the y-intercept. All right, so if I'm going to find b, then I've got to substitute values into, the, into x, y, and m. So... You may say, well, well where, where do I get the x and the y? Well, you get the x and the y from this point that's given. So, so your point that's given is negative 9, 5. So that's going to be your, your x, which is going to be negative 9, and your y is going to be 5. Okay? So remember, in order, this is an ordered pair, x coordinate, y coordinate. All right, so we just go ahead and substitute now into x, y, and m. So I get y, which is 5 equals m, which is negative 4 thirds, just like that, times the x coordinate, which is negative 9, right, plus b, okay? All right, now let's go ahead and simplify. Now, now notice that I, the only variable you see is b, so, so once I simplify this, I can solve for b. So let's go ahead and simplify this. So let me go off to the side and, and kind of talk about that. So I'm going to put this as negative 9 over 1 like that. So so notice I can do one of several things. I can, I can multiply the numerator, multiply the denominators, and then reduce, or I can reduce first and then multiply, right? So if you multiply the numerators, you do see that negative 4 times a negative 9 is a positive 36, right? And then 3 times 1 is 3, and then 36 divided by 3 is 12, okay? 
or if you want to reduce first, just to show you, um, you, you would say 3 into 3 is 1, 3 to negative 9 is a negative 3, and then negative 4 times a negative 3 is a positive 12. All right, so this is 12 right here, correct? So I get 5 equals 12 plus b. And now to get b by itself, you're going to subtract 12 from both sides, and then combining like terms, 5 and a negative 12 is a negative 7 equal 12 and negative 12 are opposites, so when you add them up, you get 0. 0 plus b is b. So there's your y-intercept. That's your y-intercept. So therefore, you're, you're going to say, um, uh, slope intercept form, y equals mx plus b. So you're going to say y equals the slope, remember, which is negative 4 thirds, times x plus b, which is a negative 7. But don't leave it like this. You're expected to know that plus negative 7 means subtract 7. So your answer your answer is going to be y equals negative 4 thirds x minus 7. All right, so that's the equation of that line. So that's our first approach. So let's look at that second approach. So the second approach, remember, is to use point slope form. That's our second approach. So let's do the second approach. So second approach, point slope form. Second approach, second approach, point slope form. So remember, point slope form is y minus y1 equals its slope times x minus x1. So if you're going to use slope, uh, if you're going to use point slope form, you've got another slope which you do, and you have to know a point in that line right here. So you have to know a point in that line, right? Oops, point on the line. All right, so here and here. So I do know a point in the line. The point of the line is negative 9, 5. So when I substitute this into the equation, the negative 9 is going to represent x1, and the 5 is going to represent um, um, uh, y1, right? So um, negative 9 is x1, 5 is y1. So here's your y1, here's your x1. All right, let's go ahead and substitute. Okay, so I get y minus y1, which is 5, okay, equals the slope, which is negative 4 thirds, times x minus x1, which is a negative 9. All right, now be careful with this part here. you got to rewrite, subtract a negative 9. All right, so let's go do that now. So remember, um, subtracting a negative 9 means the same thing as adding the opposite. So this becomes y minus 5 equals negative 4 thirds times x plus 9. Now let's go ahead and distribute. So when I distribute, I get y minus 5 equals negative 4 thirds times x is a negative 4 thirds x and then I have negative 4 thirds let me go ahead and do that here negative 4 thirds times a positive 9 right all right so let's talk about what that is so let's go ahead and reduce so 3 to 3 is 1 3 to 9 is 3 so I get negative 4 times 3 which is negative 12 so it becomes minus 12 so negative 4 thirds times a positive 9 is a negative 12 and now to get y by itself, because remember, we're trying to get this in slope-intercept form, so that's getting y by itself. Right now, I'm subtracting 5. The opposite is to add 5. Notice I'm, I'm aligning my like terms. And then when I combine like terms, negative 5 and positive 5 are opposites. So when I add those, those are 0. 5 and z y plus uh, 0 is y equal negative 4 thirds x. A negative 12 and a positive 7, a uh, positive 5, is a negative 7. And there's your answer. So notice this the equation of the line using the second approach is the same as the equation of the line using that first approach. All right, so remember this is using uh, slope intercept form, and this right here is using point slope form. You have to know both. You have to know both. All right, so that was number three. Let's look at number four. Let's do a couple more. So let's look at number four. All right, so here's number four. So you, you want to find the equation of a line that contains this point and has this slope. All right, so let's look at that first approach. Remember, first approach is to use slope-intercept form. First approach, we're going to use slope-intercept form. And so remember, slope-intercept form is y equals mx plus b. So if I'm going to use slope-intercept form, I've got to find the y-intercept, which I don't know, and I must know the slope, which I do know. So this is not the y-intercept. So remember, the y-intercept 
um, has x coordinate being 0. So you know this is not the y-intercept because if you were to look at where that point's located for 6, that's in the first quadrant. So notice, notice that this is not on the y-axis, so that's not the y-intercept. You're trying to find the y-intercept, okay? All right, so if I'm going to find that y-intercept, then I've got to substitute values into x, y, and m. So here's your m. Now let's talk about where to find the x and the y. So the x and the y will come from this point. So the point is um, 4, 6. So this will be your x, this will be your y that you're going to substitute. So let's go ahead and substitute now. So I have y, which is 6, equals the slope, which is negative 2, times x, which is 4, plus b. So let's, let's go ahead and solve for b now. So let's go ahead and simplify negative 2 times 4, which is negative 8. So 6 equals negative 8 plus b. All right, I get b by itself. You're going to add 8 to both sides. And then combining like terms, notice I'm aligning my like terms. Um, 6 plus 8 is 14. Equal, this is 0, because those are opposites. Negative 8 plus 8 is 0. And then 0 plus b is b. So there's your y-intercept. So your answer uh, will be y equals mx plus b. So y equals m, which is negative 2. So you're going to say negative 2x plus b, your y-intercept, which is 14. So there's, your, there's, there's the equation of that line. So let's do, this, let's do that same problem using a second approach. So let's do the second approach. And so remember, the second approach is to use point-slope form. So second approach, we're going to use point-slope form. So use point-slope form. All right, and remember, point-slope form is y minus y1 equals the slope times x minus x1. And if I'm going to use point-slope form, I must know the slope which I do, and I must know the, a point which I do. All right, so you see that point 4, 6? 4, 6, that's what you're going to substitute into x1 and y1, okay? 4, 6, x1, y1. All right, so that's going to be this and this. All right, so let's go and do that. So I get y minus y1, which is 6. Make sure you, I'll always make sure you're putting the right coordinate in the right place. So this is your, your y, this is your x. So y minus y1, which is 6, equals the slope, which is negative 2, times x minus x1, which is 4. Now remember, you, you want to you write the answer in slope-intercept form, so you got to get y by itself, so you got to do some more work here. So let's go ahead and distribute now. So I get y minus 6 equals a negative 2x. Negative 2 times x is a negative 2x. A negative 2 times a negative 4 is a positive 8. And then finally, to get y by itself, to put in slope-intercept form, right now I'm subtracting 6. The opposite is to add 6. And when I combine like terms, these are opposites. Negative 6 and a positive 6 is 0. y and 0 is y equal negative 2x. A positive 8 and a positive 6 is a positive 14. So notice whether I do the second approach using point-slope form or the first approach using slope-intercept form, notice I get the same answer. Okay? All right. That was number four. All right, let's do one more, and that's going to be number five. So let's get number five. All right, number five, you want to write, you want to find the equation of a line, and you would put the answer in slope-intercept form. Now this line contains this point and has this slope. All right, so let's look at first approach is to use, first approach is to use, um, Slope-intercept form, and remember slope-intercept form is y equals mx plus b. All right. Now, remember, if I'm going to use slope-intercept form, I've got to find the y-intercept. And, uh, and I must know the slope as well, which I, I do. But I don't know the y-intercept. This is not the y-intercept. Because remember, the y-intercept, the x-coordinate has to be 0. All right. So, so i got to find the y-intercept, which means that I've got to substitute into... Um, um, x, y, and m, and, and I know enough. I know enough information to do that. So, so to you know your your m, which is your slope, which is five six, and you know an, an x and a y on the line, which is this point right here. So your point, which is negative twelve, negative three. So this is going to be your x, and this is going to be your y. So if I substitute, I get y, which is which is negative three equals the slope, which is 5, 6, times x, 
which is negative 12 plus b. And then I got to get b by itself, but I've got to simplify this right here first. So let's go off to the side and kind of and kind of talk about that. So I have 5, 6 times a negative 12 divided by 1. Now let's go ahead and reduce this. So if I reduce first, 6 into 6 is 1, 6 into negative 12 is a negative 2. So I get 5 times a negative 2, which is a negative 10. So this is negative 10 right here. So I get negative 3 equals negative 10 plus b. And then you get b by itself, you're going to add 10 to both sides now. So if I add 10 to both sides, negative 3 plus 10 is a positive 7 equal negative 10 plus 10. Those are opposites. When you add them up, you get 0. 0 plus b is b. So there's your y-intercept. And so therefore, your answer, you're going to say y equals the slope, which is 5, 6. Oops, 5, 6 times x plus 7. And there's your answer. Okay, the y-intercept is 7. All right, so that's that first approach. Let's look at that second approach. So the second approach is to use point-slope form. All right, so let's see what we do if we do that. So point-slope form. So remember, you must know both approaches. So second approach is to use point-slope form. Now remember, point-slope form is y minus y1 equals a slope times x minus x1. And if I'm going to use point-slope form, I must know the slope, which I do, and I must know an x1 and a y1, which I do. So I know a point in that line. So, so um, negative 12, negative 3, this is going to be your x1, this is going to be your y1. All right, so let's go ahead and substitute. So, so I have y minus y1, which is a negative 3. So be careful when, when you have those uh, uh, subtracting and negatives, because you've got to rewrite this equals the slope, which is 5, 6, times x minus x1, which is negative 12. All right, now before you distribute or anything, make sure you simplify, you rewrite this expression, because you need to know that y subtract to negative 3 means the same thing as y plus the opposite of a negative 3, which is a positive 3. So y subtract negative 3 means y plus 3. Equals 5, 6 times, and the same thing here x subtract negative 12 means x plus the opposite of negative 12, which is a positive 12, so this becomes x plus 12. All right, now once you get to that point, when, once you simplified this part here, you, you rewrote this expression, then you go ahead and, and distribute. So I get y plus 3 equals 5, 6 times x is 5, 6x plus, all right, let's go off to the side and figure this out, 5, 6 times 12 divided by 1. Okay, 5, 6 times 12 divided by 1. Let's reduce. 6 into 6 is 1. 6 into 12 is 2. 5 times 2 is 10. So it becomes plus 10. All right, and then one more step and you're done. Let's go ahead and subtract 3 to get y by itself because remember you're trying to write this in slope-intercept form. Slope-intercept form is, to, is where you have the equation uh, y by itself. So positive 3 and negative 3, those are opposites. So that's 0 when you add them up y plus 0 is y equal negative, oops, sorry, let me go ahead and rewrite this over, y equals a positive 5, 6x, and then positive 10 and negative 3 is a positive 7. All right, so regardless of whether you use the point-slope form or slope-intercept form, you get the same answer, the same equation for the line. All right, so that is, um, let's see, let me go back and get the original. So that's going to be the topic. So that's that's the end of the topic where you're writing an equation in slope intercept form given the slope and a point. So remember there are two approaches. One approach was to use slope intercept form and the second approach was to use point slope form. All right and you have to know both approaches. All right so that'll be the end of this lesson.